That civil war is tearing wide open. The squad rushing to defend Congresswoman Ilhan Omar, even after her latest controversial move, retweeting a video from anti-Israel group International Solidarity Movement, or ISM. The Anti-Defamation League listed ISM as one of the top 10 anti-Israel organizations in the country, and the FBI has even looked into the group for possible terrorist ties. House Republicans are now pushing to remove Omar from her committees for her prior comments likening the U.S. and Israel to terror groups Hamas and the Taliban. They want to punish Omar the same way that Democrats went after Marjorie Taylor Greene. But Speaker Pelosi would rather put it to rest. Watch. She clarified it, mm -hmm. and we thanked her for clarification. So do you want people to just let it go? They, they could say whatever they want, but what I'm saying is, is end of subject. She clarified, we thanked her. End of subject. What other people go out and say is up to them. Mm. Ari, your thoughts? Except it's not the end of the subject. The subject continues because Elon Omar continues to say these things. The fundamental problem is you really have a member of Congress whose ideas are on the antithesis of democracies defending themselves. She equated the United States and our best ally in the Middle East, Israel, the only democracy in the Middle East, with Hamas and with terror and with the Taliban. No rational person can come to that conclusion. And I remind you, this is the same congresswoman who said about September 11th that that was the day that some people did something. So she dismisses an attack on the United States and she equates the United States and Israel with the worst terrorists in the world. She's a menace. She's a reckless congresswoman whose judgment is awful. And I hope she does get removed from her committee. That does seem to be the thing that you do these days in Congress. And I hope she gets removed by the people of her district. I don't think that's going to happen. So this is the only recourse a rational person has left. Right, which, Tommy, means that if they don't, if this doesn't happen, then there will be zero accountability and she can just proceed as normal, which is continuing to exhibit this disgusting pattern. Well, listen, Democrats, and especially Nancy Pelosi, they do a great job of shielding and taking care of their own. We've seen this time and time again. We saw it with Eric Swalwell. Of course, we're going to see it with Ilhan Omar. We see it with all of the outrageous things that the squad members say that AOC has said. They shield their own. They protect their own. Nancy has a big job ahead of her because this is going to continue to happen because those members of the squad, they feel like they are untouchable because what do they do as soon as they're criticized, even by members of their own? They call it racism. They call it bigotry. They call it Islamophobia. They know that they have that protection. And the problem is, is that popular culture has given them that protection. We have this now, this culture of cancel culture, which you can't say anything to certain people or else you risk being canceled yourself. So now Nancy Pelosi is so frustrated that the mob, which is quite a small mob, by the way, is going after Ilhan Omar. She wants to dismiss that. She wants to end that. But these same Democrats have no problem with the bloodthirsty cancel culture mob coming after everybody else, including those who criticize our leaders and our member of Congress, which we have the ability and we have the responsibility to do. But at the end of the day, the Democrats, they stick together. Mm. Kaylee, do you see any type of, of, of recourse happening at the election in 2022, not necessarily in her own district, as Ari pointed out, but when is enough enough for the Democrat Party members, the average members that are headed to the polls in 2022? Yeah, I think people are waking up and realizing that in today's Democrat Party, anti-Semitic rhetoric is acceptable. Uh, you have 12 Democrats, only 12 Democrats in Congress, who signed on to a rebuke of Ilhan Omar. Where are the other Democrats in today's Democrat Party? Their silence is deafening. It is noticeable. And it's Kevin McCarthy who is the one trying to hold the other party, the Democrat Party, accountable by either censuring or putting forth a bill to remove Ilhan Omar from the committee. And meanwhile, you look at Rashida Tlaib, who's saying that people need to stop, quote, policing women of color. That's what she described this as. This isn't about policing women of color. This is about going after anti-Semitic statements, but leave it to Rashida Tlaib and AOC and Ilhan Omar to make themselves the victim when, in fact, they've engaged in this egregious behavior, and they are the ones pulling the strings in the Democrat Party today. Uh, they say they're ashamed of Nancy Pelosi, and then she gives that dreadful interview on Sunday, basically walking back, in my view, uh, the criticism she had put forward of Ilhan Omar. Emily, I just mm -hmm. and I want to just flag for you guys, there is, before we look at 2022 in the congressional election that you just asked Kaylee about, there isn't one important way that Ilhan Omar could face a consequence here, and that is that 
Rep. Mike Walsh and Rep. Jim Comer, who I interviewed last hour, have introduced this motion to censure her. That might not be obviously, you know, as big a punishment as kicking somebody out of a committee, of course, but that seems to be the best option on the table for Republicans to seek recourse on this issue right now. They may very well have some success with that. We're hearing from Comer and others that there's momentum behind this idea. You know, they can't unilaterally remove her from a committee because they're not in the majority right now. Um, but this is something that they can do and may very well happen over the, even this week. That's such a great point. Thank you. And the, I mean, it's not just any committee that she's on, although, of course, they are yeah. all important, but she's on the foreign affairs. I mean, this is it's it's such a significant optics issue that for some reason, again, without that condemnation coming from her party, all it is is showing us, the American people, approval.